Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and I'm back with a brand new video. It is summer time and I like to go to a very special place to photograph birds during the summer. You know what that place is? Sunflower fields. Now, a lot of people might say, well, sunflower fields are for landscape photos, right? But that is not true. If you actually step inside of the sunflower fields, you get to see some amazing birds. Another part of this video is as I talk, I also want to give a few tips to Sony camera users. Of course, these tips are just based on my personal experience when I was out there in the field. So let's not waste time. Come on, let's go. Okay, I'll start with my own photo. This is me all camouflaged because some of these birds are so skittish. You move and they immediately notice it and take off. I've mounted the Sony A9 and Sony 200 to 600 lens on a tripod here. I would rather not use the tripod the next time I go. Hand holding the camera lets me move very freely. Also, this camera and lens is not very heavy, so handheld makes more sense to me. There are a lot of bugs in these fields. So make sure you cover most of your skin and carry some good insect repellent with you. Okay, let's get on to my first subject. Wow, this indigo bunting just landed right in front of me. As it did, a little bee started harassing it and I was able to get a few shots with the bee hovering around this bird. I have something to share about this photo. I read a story for my five-year-old son before he goes to bed every day. I actually made a story based on this photo. The story is about a bird and a bee who share the same sunflower field. They hated each other at first, but later they became best friends. My son loved it. Well, the presence of the bee was too annoying for this indigo bunting. So within a few seconds, it just took off in a blink of an eye. Well, here is a goldfinch hanging on the edge of the flower. It amazes me how they hold on to such small area. All these songbirds are fast and they hardly stay at one place for more than a few seconds. So when you are out there, you will always have to be ready and alert. As soon as you spot one, you get only a few seconds to focus and take the shot. Since these birds are fast, I would recommend staying on or above one by sixteen hundredth of a second. While using a full frame camera like A9, you should not be scared of higher ISO. In terms of focal length, anything above 400 millimeters is recommended. Since these birds are tiny, longer focal length lets you get closer to the bird. The 1.4x teleconverter works like a miracle for this combination. I will talk about it later in the video. Well, here was another indigo bunting that landed right in front of me. What amazing colors. That blue on yellow just looks so gorgeous. Okay, let me talk about some technicalities. Most of the times I use the zone focus area on my Sony A9. The zone focus almost works 95% of the times for me. But here, I would rather not use the zone focus area. The sunflowers are so close to each other, it is very easy for the zone focus to shift from one flower to the other. I would rather use single point focus or Sony calls it flexible spot. With that small square on the viewfinder, you can then accurately focus and stay locked onto the bird. Well, here is a perfect example. With zone focus, your camera will sometimes quickly focus on that sunflower in the foreground. In such scenarios, sometimes you will have to zoom out and zoom back in again to focus on the bird. With a fast moving songbird like that, you don't have enough time to readjust and take the shot. The bird will not stay there for too long. For a change, this goldfinch landed on a sunflower that hasn't bloomed yet. It just gives a different perspective to the entire image. I loved how the sunflower petals are nicely arranged inside that enclosure. Okay, I have another suggestion for all Sony camera users. Don't be afraid to use the 1.4x teleconverter if light is good. The Sony A9 and 200-600mm lens work so very well with the teleconverter. In scenarios where your subject is perched, you can focus very quickly and there is very less loss of image quality. I mean, look at this photo. You can even see the tiny hair on the sunflower stem. 
that is a proof that 1.4x teleconverter can be successfully used with this combination. If you haven't, I would highly recommend investing in a teleconverter. Trust me, you will badly need it in some scenarios, especially when you need to get close to the subject. Okay, now it's time to move on to the last two pictures. Well, finally, don't restrict yourself to bird photos only. Carry your landscape lens as well because the whole scenery is so beautiful. These sunflowers are tall, so I recommend using a step ladder to climb a little higher and get a good perspective of the entire field. If you don't own a camera, you can still get some good pictures with your smartphone. Just make sure you go on a partly cloudy day. Even better if you can make it during sunrise or sunset to get that perfect sky. Well, that is it. So this summer, search for some sunflower fields in your area and keep a watch on the peak bloom. Many state parks plant sunflowers and most fields are open to general public. I was also hoping to see birds like red cardinal and scarlet tanagers, but luck was not on my side for this species. Hopefully next time. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. That is my Instagram page. If you're on Instagram, follow me there as well. Your support is going to take this channel a long, long way. So until next time, guys, see ya.